iOS 4.2 has just been released to developers and it actually brings more stuff than we expected to the iPhone. Apple finally approves yet another native app that brings Google Voice to iOS and Consumer Reports still won't recommend the iPhone 4. All this and more coming up right now. Hello everybody, I'm Jaime Rivera and welcome to the Pocket Now iReview, the show where we go through all the weeks cool and not so cool inside the world of Apple's iOS devices. As always, let's start off with the cool. Well, iOS 4.2 has recently been released to developers, and even though a lot of the stuff there has to do with iPad, there are some cool things coming into the iPhone and the iPod Touch. First of all, you'll get AirPlay, which will allow you to stream content like video and audio, not just like AirTunes in the past where you can only stream audio. This time you can also stream video within Apple products and also certain peripherals like, I don't know, TVs, stereos, it all depends on what you have. And another cool thing is that you'll actually get wireless printing to work Work with iOS devices. Other cool features coming into iOS 4.2 is that, for example, you can now vote thumbs up or thumbs down on YouTube videos. You'll also get FaceTime links on messaging, and you'll also get more restrictions. For example, you can now restrict that users don't delete an application on your iOS device, which is cool for parental restrictions, etc. The funny part about this release is that it's already been jailbroken. Sadly, this jailbreak only works with the iPhone 3GS for now, and it depends on what boot ROM you have. If you remember that kamikaze way of doing jailbreaks in the past where you needed a PC, and it's not really like the jailbreakme.com feature that we featured recently, but apparently, you know, the funny part is, hey, it's already jailbroken. So this means that the dev team is working hard. Things are going good. Let's see what happens. As of now, iOS 4.2 has a couple of bugs. Nothing's perfect, but the developers community is stating that it's really cool for now. Let's see what happens. Speaking of wireless printing, it seems some companies weren't willing to wait for iOS 4.2 to be rolled out. One of these companies is Epson, which just released an application in conjunction with Figstream called Print Genie. I know, weird name. I I'm not re really even sure it came out right, and it's not the Genie that we've known, it's J-I-N-N-I. -N -N -I. But anyways, the thing about this application is if you have a Wi-Fi enabled Epson printer, and you're willing to pay 10 bucks for the application, which is currently on sale for seven, you'll actually get wireless printing through the application on your Epson enabled printer. And that's pretty much it. Is it worth the seven or 10 bucks? Well, that's really up to you. Do you really need to print? Is it really gonna drive Epson's printer sales? Well, you'll never know. And will it be worth it considering iOS 4.2 is coming up, up next? Well, it depends on you again. So think about it, it's seven to 10 bucks. It's already available on the App Store and go for your purchase if it's really necessary for your printing lifestyle. I mean, it's really not that case for me, but anyways. Out of a shocker thing that happened this week, Apple actually approved the Google Voice native application to work on iOS devices, meaning the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Why is this a shocker? Well, if you remember there was an application the past months ago called GV Mobile that was actually pulled from the App Store for offering Google Voice to iPhones, and Apple for some reason just said they weren't gonna support it. Well, it's out there again. GV Connect is the new name for the application, but it offers every feature that you'd be expecting for Google Voice on your iOS device. So you now have an option to not have to be using the web application that Google offers. You know, it can be sluggish sometimes. It sometimes doesn't work. So uh, it costs $3, it's not free, but again, it's another option for the web application if you don't wanna be using the sluggish version that Google offers currently. So let's see what happens. Let's see if it continues lasting and let's hope Apple doesn't pull the plug again. You know I debated whether to leave this on the cool section or not but the good thing is the not so cool section is coming so bear with me here. You remember the case program for the iPhone 4 is ending on September 30th so that is definitely not cool but the good thing about this is if you remember our past iReview we mentioned that the Telcel manager in Mexico actually mentioned that he was going to get a new batch of iPhone 4 devices as of September 30th that would not have the antenna gate issues. So what could this mean? Could it mean that actually as of September 30th, we're not gonna get any more iPhone 4s with antenna gate issues? Could be, just a rumor, so let's see what happens. Let's start off with the not so cool. Let's continue talking about the case program ending on September 30th, and let's talk about consumer reports not recommending the iPhone 4 again. Yeah, you know, you remember that part where Consumer Reports first said they would recommend the iPhone 4 as the best 
smartphone out there. And then a couple of weeks later, they would come up saying, no, we're not going to recommend it because of the antenna gate issues. And they would offer for you to use duct tape, which we're not going to use. But to be honest, Consumer Reports is right. You shouldn't have to use a case for the phone to work. And let's hope Apple actually deals with it as of a September 30th. Let's see what happens. That's it for today's iReview. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions or comments you have about this video, let us know at twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets or youtube.com slash pocketnowvideo. That's it for now.